Hello, in this short tutorial, I want to show you how you can set up VS Code to use the CL compiler that ships with Visual Studio Community. Now, whether that actually makes sense is up to you. For me, it does, and so I wanted to show you how to do it. If you don't have Visual Studio Community already, you need to download it. I've put the link into the description. If you press the download button here, it will bring up the pop-up, which will prompt you to download the file, which will then show you the VS Code. No, not the VS Code, the Visual Studio installer, right? Once you've installed this, you need to go and find the install location, which is usually under C. And then under C, there's programs x86. And if you look in here, there has to be a folder called Microsoft Visual Studio. You open this, and what is important to you is a file called vcvars, vcvars. I don't know if I can spell PC virus, right? There's a bunch of files in here. And depending on what you need, you will want a different one. But let's say we want to build a 64 bit, we want to build a 64 bit application, we would use this batch file, Windows batch file, to initialize a development environment so that we can use the CL compiler on the command line. And I'll show you how that works if I can actually click on this. We will open its path and this is the file. What we can then do, we can go with the mouse up here into the path and press and type in cmd right and now if i type cl which is the compiler for visual studio community there is it's telling me that it didn't find whatever i wanted to, to use right if i if i now do vc vars 64.bat i get this visual studio developer command prompt telling me that it's initialized for x86. If I now do CL, it is telling me, oh, wait, you, you try to use the compiler. What type of option do you want? What type of file name? And what, type, what do you want to link with, right? So this is very important. We need this. And let's say we want to create a 64-bit application. We will go here. We press Shift, right-click, and then we... Let me find it. We copy the path, right? Which is very important. We copy the path. Now let's switch to a different folder. I have this folder over here on my D drive, which is game developer. And let's make a simple application. Let's make a, a simple build system, right? Nothing in here. Let's say, okay, we have a source folder. If I can type today, we have a source folder and then we also have a, not this, we have a file called, I make it a text document, it's fine, build dot uh, batch, uh, but not batch. Yeah, I don't do, I don't really do many batch files, so build dot batch. Right, yes. Okay, so this build the bat file. We will work on this, but first, assuming you have Visual Studio Code installed, you can now, and if you enable the option to open with code, we, you can now open this folder using Visual Studio Code, right? If you didn't install Visual Studio Code, you have to go into Google and type in, I don't know, download, Post code, right, and then download the one that you want, which is probably one of these, right? So we we are going to open, and remember, if you're installing it, if you're installing it, you make sure that you tick open with code, which, in my opinion, makes things a lot easier when when working with VS Code. This will then bring up this, this, uh, this window here. 
with an empty build.bat and we will paste in the path that we copied, right? Because we'll use that, that one later. Okay, so before we continue, let's just create a very simple C++ program, right? We go over here into source and we open a new file and let's call this main.cpp, right? And we're just going to keep it very simple. We include, you, we make the basic IO stream hello world thing, right? We create an int main and we type std c out hello world std end line, right? Very simple. This is all we want to do in our program. Now let's finish the, the build.bat file. The first thing that I like to do, and I think that's very important, is to turn echoes off. So the, the path we copied, this is the important thing. We need to call this, and this is what you do in, in batch files. You just call, you can call batch files in batch files by just typing in call, right? We could also add some if not defined, right? If not defined stuff over here. And the environment is called dev and uh, dear. Yeah. We could also do this, right? If we do not have this defined, call this only then. But in my experience, this will always get called so this is probably not needed which is why i'm going to omit this for now and just call this every time we call the batch file you will see why later and i like to do the following i i like to set a few variables to organize it a bit better i like to do includes include i can actually include right and let's set the first one and these are the compiler flags that we are adding now. For example, slash i is for including a directory, which, we do, which would be for us source, right? Source. Uh, I like to set uh, links. And this is also another compiler flag that we have to do is link, right? And we could, for example, user32.lib. Since this is very Windows specific, uh, we could... And you'll probably, if you set up such a build system, you'll probably use Windows stuff, right? So user32.lib is a great example, I think, right? And I like to set defines, which is just another compiler flag, slash D, and let's say debug, right? We are doing a debug build. I like to then do echo, and this is what I want uh, on the command line to show up, echo building main right and then we call the actual compiler which is cl this is the compiler <clears throat> we then add a special compiler flag which is exception handling and this is very important in case there is an exception in your program how these are being handled i don't know much about this but all i know that it is required and makes it safer and that's okay for me if you want to read up on this, I put a link down in the description. Knock yourself out. Right, so now we do, we add the includes. We then add the defines. And then we say, well, what do we want to compile? And let's just compile the main.cpp. And then we also add the links in the end. Links. Right, and that's it for the... Very simple build system. Now, this build system works best when you only have one compilation unit, which I have in my most of my projects. If you haven't done so already, I encourage you to follow Handmade Hero on YouTube. He has a very detailed explanation on why single build, single file build system, or he likes to call them single compilation unit build systems, can be very powerful and especially very fast. I have another project that I'm working on, which is a game, and it compiles basically in, I don't know, one second every time, no matter how many files I have. So yeah, but I'm rambling again. Okay, 
Now what we need to do is we need to add a folder vs dot vs code in the root of our folder that we are working in. This is so that VS Code will call this batch file as a build task. We have to tell VS Code what to do. And in order to do that, we have to create what is called a tasks.json file. We, since this is, JS is a JSON file, we open with curly braces. And then most of the time you start with version. Right? Most of them do start with version. And then we add tasks, which is an array. And for each task, we have to specify a label. Let's call this build. And then we have to specify, oops. The end command. And for this command, we want to do the, and VS Code has what it's called variables that you can use. For example, I want to use, it has to be, Okay, uh, I can, yeah, this is what's called the workspace folder, right? Which would be the very top folder. And we then want to call the build.bat, slash build.bat file, right? We also need to add in a group. And I since since I fucked it up, let's do it again. Group. And you can if you're lucky you can choose one of these. What type of group do we have? It is a build. Is it default? Yes, it is. And that's it for the tasks.json file. This is the task that we will be calling when we press Control Shift B, which we can do. And then down in the bottom you can see that we successfully built it that we have successfully built main. Right? I should also remove the the logos for Microsoft, but it's not that important right now. So we have the main exe now, but we have to tell VS Code what happens, what should happen when we press F5, which is starting our program. It doesn't know what to do yet, right? So and this is what we call, uh, what we define in a launch launch.json file. Right, and this one starts, uh, let me put this here, right? Yeah, it starts with version. And then, most of the time, it will help you out. We have to add a, add a configuration. We want to launch a configuration, right? And the name of the configuration, let's call this run. Oh, let's forget this. Boom. Then we have a program that we want to run. And this is where we add the these um, variables for VS Code again, which is the work this folder. Right. And we want to call main.exe. Let me just check if this is correct. Yep. Boom. I think. Yeah. And there's no much since. Okay, so I'm missing type and request. Type. And I don't know much, but what we have to type in here is cpp vs debug. And not four times, but. Okay. Usually I just do this. Okay, I need to request. Launch. Yes, we want to launch and the current working directory is the workspace root. I like to use workspace folder. I don't know if there's much of a difference, but if I now press F5, you won't see much, but it actually ran main. What we could do here in our main.cpp, we could do a while true, right? And then continuously I guess let's just do it like this, right? Build this again, successfully built, and then it's constantly running and making our hello world output go crazy. So yeah, that's it. I guess thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.